Hello, everybody. This is Harjinder, and welcome to the lecture video for Topic 15, Foreign Currency Transactions. Foreign currency transactions, um, essentially companies can from time to time have transactions that are denominated in a foreign currency, i.e. a currency other than the Canadian dollar. Uh, when a Canadian company records these transactions in its books, uh, the debits and credits are understood, uh, but the dollar value to be reported needs to be converted into the equivalent Canadian dollars. The rates that should be used to translate the foreign currency amounts, uh, you know, there can be a, a bunch of different rates to pick from, starting with the spot rate. So this is the most commonly used rate. It's the rate at which the foreign currency uh, can be exchanged into Canadian dollars if the exchange were to take place immediately. We could use the closing rate, which is basically the spot rate uh, at the end of the financial statement reporting period. So typically if you have a, a, an annual financial statement reporting period, the closing rate for the end of the year uh, is often used to translate uh, certain financial statement information into equivalent Canadian dollars. Historical rates could be used. That's the spot rate on the date uh, a particular transaction occurred uh, in the past. Forward rates are agreed upon rate uh, for the exchange of uh, currency. So either purchase of a foreign currency by paying Canadian dollars or the sale of a foreign currency in exchange for Canadian dollars. Uh, the actual exchange will take place at a future date, but the rate is agreed upon currently. Uh, there's usually a little bit of a discount to the spot rate. Uh, to account for uh, time value. And then finally, we have an average rate, which would essentially be the weighted average of historical rates for a given period of time. Foreign exchange quotations could be available in direct quotation form, where one unit of the foreign currency is expressed in equivalent Canadian dollars. So for example, one US dollar uh, can be expressed as say 1.33 Canadian dollars. If we were to convert a certain number of US dollars into Canadian dollars, you would simply multiply the US dollars by the equivalent exchange rate. In our example here, if let's say we had to convert 100,000 US dollars into equivalent Canadian, we'll multiply 100,000 US dollars by the 1.33 rate to get uh, the equivalent Canadian dollars, $130,000. In other cases, an indirect quote might be available where one Canadian dollar is expressed in terms of the foreign currency. So an example of that could be the uh, Canadian dollar and Japanese yen uh, quotation. So suppose we have one Canadian dollar equals 86 Japanese yen. Now, if we were to convert Japanese yen into Canadian dollars, then we would need to divide the yen by the exchange rate. So say if we needed to convert a million Japanese yen into equivalent Canadian dollars, we would divide the million Japanese yen by 86 to get the equivalent Canadian dollars. Next question is, which rates do we use? So individual transactions must be translated into the functional currency using their historical rate. Uh, functional currency is a technical term that we will revisit later on when we uh, cover the material from um, chapter 11, uh, which deals with the translation of foreign subsidiaries. For now, uh, it is basically the currency of the predominant um, economic uh, environment in which, a comp in, a, in which a company operates. You can have possibly a Canadian company, uh, a Canadian oil and gas company, if it has its sales uh, 
structured in uh, in U.S. dollars, and most of its costs are pegged uh, in in U.S. dollars terms, then the functional currency for that particular company may well be the U.S. dollar. Right. Uh, in other cases, it could be that the Canadian company is essentially entrenched in Canada. It has its sales primarily in Canada and Canadian dollars. It incurs costs uh, for labor and uh, materials and so on, Canadian dollars. In that case, the functional currency would be the Canadian dollar. It's, um, we make the assumption that for Canadian companies, in most cases, the functional currency will be the Canadian dollar. So when we convert foreign currency amounts into Canadian dollars, we're making the implicit assumption that the Canadian dollar is the functional currency. And what we do is we use the historical rate for most types of transactions, but if we get recurring transactions such as sales or purchase of inventory, which uh, happen on uh, a fairly regular basis, these, uh, in order to facilitate ease of calculation, are often translated using an average rate for the period, uh, provided that there's not a whole lot of fluctuation in the exchange rates. If the exchange rates have been more or less stable, then you can uh, end up simplifying the process by, use, uh, by using an average rate to uh, convert a whole bunch of transactions all at one go. Okay, monetary items. Uh, these are items that are converted into cash at a fixed and predetermined amount. We can have monetary assets, including uh, for sure cash, but also accounts receivable, uh, investments in, um, uh, in interest bearing securities that do not fluctuate a whole lot in value. Those are considered monetary assets. And we can also have monetary liabilities. Most liabilities are monetary liabilities. Anything that has a suffix payable attached to it would be a monetary liability. Now, when converting uh, into equivalent Canadian, the monetary items, now keep in mind these are, we're talking about assets and liabilities. So that's, uh, those are items that relate to the statement of financial position, the balance sheet. Uh, these are to be translated using the closing rate um, at the end of the fiscal year. Interest um, is an interesting uh, bit to keep in mind. Interest, um, whether it is interest earned or interest to be paid, uh, interest income or expense that is reported on the uh, statement of comprehensive income should be translated using the average rate for the time period that it relates to. However, the actual amount of interest that will be received or paid is to be translated using the spot rate at the time of payment or when we record an accrual entry. If for sure, if there have been changes in the exchange rates, then the amount recorded as interest income, for example, and the interest receivable, uh, because the interest income will be recorded using an average rate and the interest receivable or received is uh, recorded using the spot rate at the time uh, of the uh, recording of the transaction, uh, there could be a difference between the Canadian dollar equivalent that difference is recorded as a foreign exchange gain or loss, which goes through after loss. In class, we will do examples uh, covering different kinds of foreign currency transactions uh, to be booked into um, the financial records of the company.